friends welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat West Bengal India this is a cataract with small people let us observe the surgical steps this is the main incision on the posterior aspect of the limbus this is a 2.8 millimeter keratome there is minimal leakage of aqueous so I'm making the side boards before injecting visco this is the side board on the right side and this is another side board on the left side the side boards are about three clock hours away from the main incision the reason being astigmatism induced by the main incision may be reduced to some extent by the side boards if they are three clock hours away now an inject air bubble has been injected and this is type 1 blue dye beneath the air bubble and here is a bit of adrenaline I just want to see if the people dilates little more by the action of adrenaline but in this case it had no effect I usually wash the dye with BSS and then inject viscoelastic substance visco I used in this case is 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose and now the anterior chamber is underfilled that means it is not filled off with lot of visco and then some amount of visco is injected behind the iris to make some room to tuck alternate flanges of B hex people expander which I am going to use in this case and now here is the B hex people expander it is in a very a nice housing and it is a very flexible very user friendly device you have to take it totally into the anterior chamber with the help of a B hex forceps and at on go you can tuck the leading flange in this way and now go through the right side board and tuck the flange centered at on o'clock in this way and now introduce the B hex forceps through the left side board with your left hand and tuck the flange centered at 10 o'clock in this way this is a on plane device based on the principle that iris will go above and below the device above and below the notches and flanges and now capsulorexis is to be done I take a 26 G this bent needle incise the anterior capsule raise a capsular tag I hold this capsular tag with the uterata forceps at this time I lift the anterior leaf of the main incision and keeping it lifted up I do the rexis this rexis is about 5 millimeter in size enough for fecal multiplication now hydrodissection is done we could see the fluid wave going to the opposite equator and now the nucleus is tapped and the nucleus is rotated if it doesn't rotate well go through the other side port and rotate in opposite direction Yes, the nucleus has rotated nicely, inject some more visco and now introduce the tip of the FECO handpiece. This is easy tip of Oatly Cataract 3. First, I remove some superficial cortical lens matter and then I turn the handpiece, make the bevel up bury the tip into the substance of the nucleus and chop the nucleus 
into two halves. Rotate the heminuclei and chop each heminucleus into smaller parts. Now I tilt the nuclear fragments and emulsify the fragments with ultrasonic energy. If you tilt it, chance of posterior capsular catch is very minimal. Now the other heminucleus is not rotating well. So what I do is I come out, inject some visco and then take two instruments one Sensky hook and another chopper and now I try to rotate this but it didn't rotate very nicely so I just leave it here I have to do something to emulsify this nuclear fragment so I go again into the anterior chamber after injecting a bit of visco and then the bevel of the teeth faces the nuclear mass and I apply vacuum and little ultrasonic energy and hold the teeth and now I chop it at the anterior capsular plane and then each fragment is emulsified and removed. Fico power used in this case is 60 percent, fluorate 45 and vacuum 450 millimeter of mercury. So this is the last bit of nucleus and it is being emulsified at this moment. And now there is a thick sheet of epinucleus you just use the fluid irrigating fluid in such a way that it turns and comes to the tip and now I inject viscoelastic substance and ask for bimanual irrigation aspiration Yes, in this case I have used bimanual irrigation aspiration for cortical cleanoff. This is the uh, piece of epinucleus, it has come out and now I use irrigation from the right side port, aspiration from the left and I am removing visco from the uh, right side. I am sitting at the head end and the incision is at 135 degree and now I have to change hands and remove the cortex from the left side at this time the irrigation is from the left aspiration from right and I'm removing the cortical matter with bimanual irrigation aspiration the advantage is you can get access to any place any clock hour without any problem there's a little bit of cortex here I'm applying low vacuum and low flow to pick it up so that I don't catch the posterior capsule and it is done now a little bit of hydro polish and I am ready to implant the intraocular lens and now visco again 2% SPMC is injected into the anterior chamber and then in this case a hydrophilic acrylic intraocular lens is injected into the capsular bag and now the lens is dialed in such a way that the haptics are a little away from the main incision because I have to go behind the eye well to remove visco from the capsular bag. If the haptics are just in front of the main incision, it is difficult to go into the capsular bag. 
Now see how to remove the VHEX. Hold any flange above the iris, pull it centrally, go a little off, then go to periphery and hold any portion of the VHEX just in front of the main incision and pull it out. Yes, it is so easy. Removal of VHEX pupil expander is very easy, much easier than Maliwigan ring uh, or Gupta's ring or any other pupil expansion device. You just have to hold it and pull it out. No need of any injector system. And now I'm removing the viscoelastic substance. You can see that there is no sphincter damage. People is round. So I'm removing visco from posterior chamber at this moment. And now I'm going, trying to go behind the eye well. Yes, I'm behind the eye well. I'm irrigating BSS in the capsular bag. And now again in front of the eye well. So in this way, I irrigate PSS in the anterior chamber, in the capsular bag, in the posterior chamber and thoroughly remove the viscoelastic substance. Now I take the irrigating probe of bimanual IA. Yes, most of the visco has come out but still some visco is still there. So I use the irrigating probe irrigate the anterior chamber, posterior chamber and then try to go again anterior chamber and posterior chamber and now I try to go behind the eye well yes irrigate the capsular bag and then use irrigation and aspiration together to remove all the visco. If you just spend this much time for removal of visco, your patient will be very happy. There will be no rise of intraocular pressure which is induced by visco, that is 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose or viscoat from Alcon which is a combination of sodium hyaluronate and chondroitin sulfate. Now the side ports are closed by corneal stromal hydration on either side of these stab wounds. And then a final lavage of the anterior chamber is done. At this time, a gentle stream of BSS is directed towards the corneal endothelium and all the visco is uh, removed. And now, the interchamber is formed very nicely. Care is taken that the intraocular pressure remains on the higher side at the conclusion of surgery and there is no leakage of aqueous or in this case BSS from the anterior chamber and then I conclude the case. Thank you very very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, compassion and great surgical competence.